Um, this is an administration that is actually stuffed with people, military people, who um, have Iran at the top of their to-do list. They certainly did when they came into the administration. And many of them um, felt, the, uh, felt Iran personally um, from fighting in Iraq. Uh, certainly you can say that about the you know, Secretary of Defense um, and uh, McMaster's. Is, can this administration tame Iran, roll back Iran, can you talk a little bit about the dynamic between the Iranian leadership, what they see when they look at Washington, and how they're responding to Trump, and whether he can, or they can, roll back Iranian power, strong as it's maybe ever been in the region? I think one of the dangers we're talking about is that we have two administrations, two sets of leaderships that now are really prone to overreaching. Um, because the Iranians have a history of it. I mean, they have a history of it in that they tested those ballistic missiles a week, well, two weeks in, uh, two weeks into the administration because they had, to, they had to start seeing the red lines. They had to see what the reaction would be. Um, and that's dangerous. Um, and they see this rhetoric and they're still, you know, in Iran, they're still in this, they're still in this post-revolutionary phase of, um, constantly here, and I wish Farnaz made it tonight because she could have given us more insight on that inner workings, but um, that, that overreach is really dangerous. And also the, the sense that, I mean, we see this with Trump, the sense of right, honor and humiliation. It's actually some, it's very tribal. Um, I, I would say, I'm not going to say it's almost Arab because it's not, it's not, it's not entirely, it's, it's tribal in the sense of Ibn Khaldun. Um, it's this sense of, you know, he, he, he felt personally injured by uh, the treatment of the sailors and, and being, I mean, um, obviously the, the violation of the Geneva Conventions and it shouldn't have been done. Um, but that's something that you could tell sticks in his mind and, and certainly, I mean, to the military brass around him, that also has special resonance. But to him, you know, this seems to be about honor and he's not going to let the Iranians humiliate him. And that's a wild card that hopefully Madison McMasters can, can rein in to an extent. Um, but again, it goes back to ultimately, I mean, my guess is that they'll muddle through for a while, that he'll, he's, he'll keep ISIS as this priority and, um, and he'll realize or the generals will impress upon him or he'll, focus attention on something else, uh, that it's not going, there's not going to be much progress against ISIS without, if you're also going to take on Iran at the same time. And, and I think that's one of those, that's one of the important things about those generals that have, um, that have that experience with Iran and Iraq, because over that time, I think they realized how Iran operates and they realized the, the kind of levels that Iran can play at at the same time, the political levels, the military ones, the supporting everyone, and those of us who spent time in, in Iraq see that, and we sort of see um, other places where it's, uh, where it's echoed, whether it's Lebanon or Yemen a little bit now. And, um, but I think those generals know that, and they realize that that's, it's, not, it's not as easy as it may sound. Um, there's some, something else about Leila's point about you know sort of attacks, uh, the potential for attacks in the U.S. In, in some ways, I mean, because of Trump's response now, he's almost he's almost he's not quite. He is leaving. He's giving ISIS such leverage over him by th this idea of because it's guaranteed to. Any attack is guaranteed in the U.S. is guaranteed to unleash a huge reaction, um, and it's almost—it's so incredibly tempting for them to try to do something or instigate someone. I mean, more likely to instigate someone. And so, once they do that, they know that the response is going to be huge, um, and that's—that's that's really unfortunate. But he's put the country in this situation now.